to her shortstop more than likely would have been able to give him Burr more time to get down the line. So good job by Stefan to get the out. And a tricky hopper at that. First there was the big bounce, yeah. and then it kind of dribbled into a low bounce. She really eyed it into her glove. Alfred Rose Dairy makes ice cream. Don't the fans know about it? Don't the announcers know about it? <laughs> exactly. So many delicious flavors available at the Snack Shack here in Portland. They should have it right now with Skylar Rigby's catcher's equipment. It's been just as adventuresome for the central parents. Holly's had the opportunity to talk to some of those fans. Michelle, as have I, just walking around. Emotionally for these central parents and fans. They thought their team was eliminated after that controversial game last night where the West lost, but then they had new hope when they found out they'd be playing again today. The parents have been very supportive of the kids. They, they showed up in droves this morning, and their energy they gave from the stands really helped fuel their team to that win, one run win over the team from the West. And the parents have been there supporting the kids, trying to stay out of the way, but give them all the positive energy they can during this emotional up and down roller coaster ride for this team from Iowa. Thank you, Holly. Oh, I think, you know, the whole story developing, it's unfortunate for the West players. You know, they really were just executing the unfortunate moves and decisions by the coaches. And you know, one thing I always think about when you know, people ask you ask as, uh, as an athlete, you know, athletes are like thoroughbreds. You can't expect a thoroughbred horse to walk around the track and then ask it the next day to go out and race and run its you know its best race ever. So I don't think there's ever a time when you should tell your team to hold back. You know, let them play and let the game play out the way it should. In the tournament, you know, it's just, you know, karma's a, a funny thing as an athlete. That's why so many athletes are superstitious. <laughs> Emily Carter's soft liner snagged by Stefan. Back to back, nice defensive plays for third baseman Haley Stefan. The low down is on the board. It's one up and peace heading into the bottom of the third. the Little League Softball World Series from beautiful Portland, Oregon. We are at the semifinal stage in our first semifinal so far. Finally, finally, our first score is on the board. Warwick Road Island takes a 1-0 lead in the top of the third on an RBI double for their sharp bat, Deanna Rodas. Runners have been in scoring position for both teams to this point, but that was the first one that either team was able to play as we head into the bottom of the third. Remember a six-inning game here in the Little League Softball World Series at this age division. Central fans on their feet as Abby Husak, the manager's daughter, leads off the inning. I like what Abby Husak said about Isabel Hobbs getting the start tonight. She said, I'm not nervous. Isabel's a great pitcher. It's a good player that doesn't know even luck, Michelle. Yeah, that's interesting. She kind of looked at her, uh, her dad when she said that. <laughs> I think it's uh, the old motto you that you make your luck. Perhaps a teaching of her dad. Yes. Kelsey Burr with that play. Back to the top of the lineup. And her starting pitcher, Hobbs. Hawks ground out to third in her first at bat. Has been performing capably in the circle, just allowing the one run at the top of the third. But all things considered, as she hasn't thrown a pitch yet this week in this Little League World Series tournament in Oregon, she's done her work. As is Emily Carter doing hers, only two out of house. <laughs> Second 
second time through the lineup now. All the base hitters have seen the Emily Carter once. That one fell down the right field line. This is probably, though, Michelle, where we're going to start to see some of those mandatory play rules manifest themselves. Different hitters coming in. Remind us what those are for this level. Well, this is, again, one of the things I love about Little League community, community baseball. These girls all play together. They live in the same communities. So Little League sets it up that if you have 13 or 14 players on the team, so you have a larger roster, then every player on the team must have at least one offensive or one at-bat. If you have 12 or less, so you take a reduced size team, then every athlete must play at least six consecutive defensive outs as well as get an at-bat. So it's always about making sure that these young ladies have opportunities to play on the field. As I mentioned earlier, you know, nobody signs up to sit on the bench and just be the cheerleader. It's all about getting the girls in the game, getting them to fall in love with the game, and continuing to play. Sydney Bigelli makes that out. Second out of the inning brings up Carly Wilson. two teams in this semifinal with 13 players, so we might not see as many defensive substitutions, just recapping your rules explanation. We will see more people stepping in to take their at-bats, though. Yes. Look to you. Get the game, do something, make some magic. If you're a player like Olivia Murray for Warwick North, she's been the magic maker running the base pads. She scored her eighth run of the tournament. They're in the top of the third inning. Kelsey Burr is getting all kinds of activity in that hot corner. Can't make that out. This ball is going to be smashed right at Kelsey Burr. She does a good job of centering it up. And her feet a little close together. That ball goes off the heel of her glove. And then just a little bit of a bottle. It's going to allow the central team to get a base runner. And in the scoring position scooches Carly Wilson. 11 stolen base this week for Central Iowa. Eight different players with steals for this squad. Speed throughout. Well, that's one of the things this program said. They love to run. They like to use the, their speed, put a little pressure on the defense, opposing pitcher. And quite frankly, right now, they're down one to nothing. They need to do that. With two outs in this inning, I think that's a really smart play to go ahead and send one of your quicker runners down to second. And now the question comes is, do you pitch to, to Hogue? Looks like they are. They're already ahead. Hogue oh, back the middle. Scoring opportunity for Central. They make the most of it. And Hope gets to second for the second time in this game. Well, that's what I was talking about. First base is open, and you wonder at some point, do you walk Hope? Do you, you pitch around her? She's one of the best players on the central team. But with her being behind, she still has the ability to hit a ball right back up the middle. I love that. A two-strike base hit. And as a pitcher, it's one of the things you don't want to do as a hitter. That's a huge victory to be able to punch that ball back up the middle, especially with the team in second. So Wilson doing a good job. Lots of speed. Like this. She comes around third. Checks. No, she's going to score. And Wilson made that opportunity to score happen with her third steal of the week. Their sixth run now to lead Central Iowa and run scored, and that brings up the big bad Skyler Rigby with a runner in scoring position. Into left, drops fair. Central Iowa will put another one on the board. Rigby going for three. Safe. Seen her behind the dish just being a team leader and then hitting out of this four spot. It's 
Skyler Rigby just doing it all for the central team. Look at this pitch that she's going to get. It's a little bit sweet on the inside corner. She just whoops it out of the field. And a little bit of luck with the way that ball kind of careens off the outfield. Right at the fence. But look at the way her hands are so quick in contact. Beautiful swing. And look at her determination. Again, one of the things that the central team talked about is they were bold to be aggressive. They're diverse offensively. And they like to be in the position to be able to put a little bit of pressure on their opponents. Fifth hit of the week for Skyler Rigby, her second triple. And the RBI triple at that gives Iowa the lead. And Rhode Island gets on the board in the top of the third. To break up the goose eggs, Iowa responds and takes the lead in the bottom of the third. Can I do our senior hitter now? Ooh, Rippy. Got her! Thought she made it back in time. No man. Deanna Rhodes fires this ball down to her teammate Kelsey Burr, applies the tag. Look at the way they're going to get out of the inning, but the Central takes the lead 2-1.